On Gearbox today, we're looking at the Panasonic AG HMX 100E Vision Mixer. John, what have we got in the way of inputs on this unit? This is a very familiar format to anybody who is used to the Panasonic predecessors. There's four input buttons on, on the cross point rows. There are multiple inputs on the back, which can be some combination of a couple of standard defs, but some DVIs, and mostly, the most important thing, is the SDI inputs, which can be standard definition or high definition. Now, for our legacy sources, we've also got a couple of composite inputs, as well as yep. I'm noticing some HDMI. Yeah, exactly. So you've got the ability to bring almost anything you might have at a, a simple presentation straight into this switcher without mucking around with external converter boxes. Mm. Now, if we do want to do a little bit of mucking about, we can actually genlock it externally as well. Mm. So we, we can uh, avoid things like frame latency. It does have internal frame synchronizers, which is kind of nice. It's also got a built-in audio mixer. John, what can we feed to the audio mixer? Okay, there's four sets of stereo XLRs on the back. Uh, you can also bring in there's a, a single microphone input, which isn't much. I think if you really want to do anything serious with microphones, you're going to use an external microphone mixer, but hey, it's there. There's also an auxiliary input for, I don't know, a, a VTR or something else. It just has some stereo inputs with, um, uh, with a couple of RCA connectors. And then if you want to bring the audio in from your cameras, you've got the alternative of taking the um, the audio that's already coming down the line as embedded audio from the cameras if, if they support that. And there's effectively a six channel mixer on the unit to, to control it. I'll, I'm going to call it a six fader mixer because some of those channels can be stereo. The other nice yeah. thing about that is that on the multi viewer, you actually get metering for all your various input sources and you can set it up to do audio follows video as well, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think the multi viewer is, is a really strong point that I think Panasonic, it's huge. Yeah, the Panasonic has put into a lot of their product and this means you, you basically have one screen. Mm. This, especially for, for monitoring HD sources, this means. A, you're not buying a whole pile of HD monitors, and B, mm. you don't have to split all your HD signals, which in ex itself is a costly process. And of course it makes for a very easy setup, which is the whole point of this device. It's something that is easy to put together very quickly on the fly with whatever inputs it is you need to, to mix together. Yeah, and I think that that's an interesting point because it, it's it's weird where this one sits because you know it's got tallies and it's got genlocks, so mm. you could consider it a broadcast device, but it's also got you know the frame synchronizers, DVI and HDMI inputs, um, which are not HDCP compatible by the way, but they are still HDMI mm. inputs. So it could equally be used really effectively as a presentation mixer for, for iMag or for a conference sort of style. Yeah, well certainly in that, that small iMag market, or indeed there are any number of small outside broadcast and news gathering trucks that are using a device like this, its predecessor, or, or could indeed use this one as the, the central point for bringing everything together. And it's a very effective device in that format. Single operator, does everything you need to do, has a really good range of wipes, has dissolves, has downstream Kia. So it has snapshot memory, so has, you can recall yeah. the entire configuration just by punching in a number and pressing enter. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, by the way, you know, you can work out how to use this very quickly without the instruction book. It's like really obvious. You can work out yeah, how to, you how to push use the a lot yellow of buttons. Yeah, and, and you can do a lot of you can yeah. do a lot of your working out even before you connect a, a monitor to it. It's just one of those things that's easy to get to understand without having to go through a lot of documentation. Very much so, um, and a lot of the configuration is done on the uh, the LCD screen. Mm. Uh, it's not a touch screen again, but you know, really, it doesn't need to be. There's encoders underneath. Yeah, little navigating lobbies. that, I, f I found a little bit sort of interesting, um, but it, you figure it out. It's going to be one of these devices where. You, you get used to it in the first half hour. You turn it around, you press all the buttons, you see what it does, you go, you go back to the manual for the stuff that's really unfathomable. And once you've done that, you probably won't pick up the manual again, except for something really, really complex you didn't have time to get used to on, on the first pass. Hmm. Um, th there's another another couple of things that it does which we haven't actually addressed yet. It's got an RS-232 port uh, which mm. ties in with the button here marked projector remote. You can actually use this mixer to remote control Panasonic projectors. It gives you power and shutter functions which mm. is not much but it's enough in a presentation to keep the things you don't want going to screen from going to screen. Yeah, absolutely. And you can shut down your projector from the mixer, pack up your ops area, by the time you go to derig your projector it's cool. Or indeed for permanent installations where you want an operator to be able to control a projector that's in, in another room. Difficult, definitely.
Yeah. yeah. Now the other thing that we haven't talked about yet really is uh, operating modes. It does standard mm. def, it does high def, but it also does 3D. Now when you, you're doing 3D, the, the mixer effectively uh, just uses multiple buses. Um, you tie up your four video inputs as the left and right pair for two sources. So you're going to be cutting between just two things. Mm. But um, getting that right, to actually being able to do production in 3D with two sources, get that under your belt before you say it's not enough. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely not um, not not quite as straightforward as, as you may think. And indeed, there are also different 3D output modes. You can have it outputting side by side or a variety of different modes for the 3D yeah. option. When, when Jim says that uh, you, know, you want to be careful about 3D, this is actually nothing to do with this product. It's more about 3D itself, which is not as simple as it seems. And you discover this when you get into production, about, mm. about how to cut, how to make sure your planes are right. How to all, make sure your convergence sort of is set up such that your pictures are actually safe for the viewer. And, and when you switch between them, you're not turning people's eyes inside out. Topic for another day. The device does it. And the device really, will switch 3D yeah. sources. I think that pretty much wraps it up. What do you think, John? Great device, good value for the money, easy to use if you've had one of these before, and if you're taking that move from standard def to high def, does it in spades. And a lot of, lot of possible applications too. Yeah.